Today we're talking about web security. Now the title talk is how to hack an Angular app, and I will be talking about Angular briefly, but I've got a very short amount of time. So another way to talk about it is how to hack a web app. And actually another title for this talk could be real life hacking stories. Now that's because I'm going to be talking about web security by telling you three different hacking stories. But my goal really isn't to teach you anything. My goal is to get you to pee yourselves. <laughs> so thank you for the intro. My name is Asim Hussain. You can find me on Twitter as Jawache. I blog about Angular and JavaScript on my site, codecraft.tv. And I'm a cloud developer advocate at Microsoft, which means, well, so um, I'm not a security expert. I'm a web developer. I'm a web developer that got hacked one day, so I learned a thing or two about it. So I'm going to be teaching you really the basics, right? And I'm going to be teaching you some of the terminology as well. So this is just some of the terminology. A vulnerability is just a hole in your security. So not setting up a firewall is just a vulnerability. An exploit is a series of commands, a series of steps, things that you do to take advantage of a vulnerability to do bad things. Okay, we're going to start off with the first story. Equifax. There's loads of websites out there. This is one called ExploitDB. I'm just going to search PHP. Um, if you scroll down, it was still in 2017. All you've got to do is click on one of these links, and it gives you details about the exploit and how to apply the exploit. So did Equifax get hacked by zero-day exploit? No. They got hacked through a known vulnerability in their web framework, Apache Struts. If you look at the Angular docs website for both AngularJS and uh, Angular IO, and modern Angular, you'll, you'll see that um, the number one security item is keep updated to the latest version, the number one. So just to summarize, it's pretty, ha it's pretty easy to hack somebody through a known vulnerability. You just got to Google stuff, and it happens a lot more than we think. GitHub. And this is, this is his bug. This is his issue that he found with GitHub. I think it's a fascinating story. It reads like a heist movie, so I love it. And I want to share it with you. Now, I'm going to share it a little bit differently. I'm actually going to show you a video that Orange created to prove that he had hacked GitHub. And I'm going to show you it now. So it's GitHub Enterprise. You basically, to trigger this hack, to, to, to set up this hack, what you've got to do is add a webhook URL just a webhook URL. So he's going to go into his repo, add webhook. The URL is a little bit complicated, so he opens up a terminal, uh, runs a Python script to print out the URL. This is a memcache. Memcache doesn't speak HTTP. Memcache speaks memcache. So what happens when you do a HTTP request to this? It gets turned into this. Again, opens up a TCP connection to this host, this port, which is memcache. Last story. It's taking, that, it's taking that environment variable, turning into HTTP POST requests, and posting them to my server. So who here stores passwords, connection strings, and environment variables on their server? So cross-env is the good one. Cross-env, without the hyphen, is the hacked one. All it was was the same code with a different package setup script published to NPM. So what are some solutions? Well, on NPM, you can install stuff under a scope, on a private scope. This probably maybe indicates to you why Angular is under at Angular, right? Only if you own this scope can you add any package underneath there. But they've recently added in some interesting rules, some package moniker rules. So if, you, if there's a package already called package hyphen name, you now cannot deploy a package which changes only by punctuation. You can follow me on Jorik, and I'll be, I'll be posting up uh, the slides uh, later on after the conference. Thank you very much for your time. <laughs>